Hello and welcome to the My Heritage webinar series. I'm Jeff Rasmussen, your host, live in, at webinar headquarters in Middleton, Idaho. Today we have Uri Gonin with us, who is live in Toronto, Canada, for his class, Genealogical Charts and Reports, Organize and Share Your Research on My Heritage. Thanks to Uri and thanks to the more than 1,900 of you from 30 countries around the world for registering for today's live webinar. So wherever and whenever you are, glad to have you with us. And now I'd like to introduce our speaker. Uri Gonin has been working at MyHeritage since 2005, where he took on different challenges and roles in product development and product management. He has been part of the wild journey of MyHeritage from a small startup to a dominant company in the genealogy space. Among his involvement in key projects of the company, Uri was the original developer behind Family Tree Builder, and the product manager of MyHeritage's genealogy search engine. Recently, he was involved in several genealogical projects such as Pedigree Map, Pedigree View, Tree Consistency Checker, and several integrations with uh, Family Search. Before joining MyHeritage, Uri has worked in other software startups in Israel, the United States, and Canada. He now lives and works in Toronto. Please put together your virtual hands and let's give Uri Gonin a nice warm webinar. Welcome. Uri, how are you? And welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm doing quite well. Well, it's always nice to have you here, and, and we're looking forward to learning more about my heritage today. And uh, the screen looks great, so Uri, the time's all yours. Thank you, Jeff, for the introduction. Thank you, everybody, for joining this uh, webinar. Um, today, as Jeff mentioned, I'm going to talk about and concentrate on genealogical charts and reports on my heritage, a good way to organize and share your research on my heritage. Let's move on to the next slide. Um, so visualizing, organizing, sharing is what all charts and reports are about. It's also a good way to check that you have all the data and what is what are you missing by looking at one good chart or the report allows you to get a good understanding of your family tree and the state of your research. We'll learn today about the different types of charts and reports that are available, when to use each type and how to create them. Uh, remind everybody, charts and reports among most of the features on MyHeritage are free to all MyHeritage users. You can always create a family tree on MyHeritage for free, use charts and reports for free. These are available both from our website, MyHeritage.com, when you create a uh, tree there. And also, if you're using Family Tree Builder, there are many of those reports that are available directly from Family Tree Builder. Uh, charts and reports have been around in my heritage for a very long time. It's one of the cornerstones of our um, products. Um, I've been involved personally in, in a lot of in the development and management of those features a long time ago. Uh, we've been adding a few recently, and we will always update and create more such reports and charts in the future. So let's go ahead and see how you reach and create those charts and reports from myheritage.com, from the online site. So this is here my tree. Um, from the family tree menu, which I opened here, um, to get to the family tree itself, you click on family tree. But if you go to the more link at the bottom, it will expand a few more options. And what we're going to talk about today is mostly in this section called print charts and books. So it allows you to create a chart or a book report and then print it. So let's go ahead and click that link. And what you will see is this page that outlines the different charts and books that are available online on myheritage.com family site that you create for yourself. And you can see here that there are several types of charts that you can select from. And the last one is what we call a family book, which is uh, more of a book report. And what we'll do today is go over those different charts and books and see what they are, how to create them, and how to customize them. Um, 
when we'll start with a bow tie and the bow tie is the first and probably the most popular type of chart it shows basically a couple a husband and a wife the husband's ancestor spanning to the left and you can see here from this example the ancestors of the wife spanning to the right and children between them so this is a great chart especially for your children it tells them where they came from, who are their parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and so on. When you scroll down to the second section of the screen, after you've selected the type of chart, you will see that you can now select the style of the chart. And we have several, quite a few uh, nice defined styles that involve background colors and background uh, images and styles of um, frames and colors and all that that you can choose from. So you can scroll here and see which one you would want to use. And you can always, and I'll show a bit later, how you can customize that as well to create exactly the look that you want. So in this bow tie, you select who is the husband and wife that are the focus of the chart. By default, it's going to be yourself as you usually are someone in the family tree but you can then go and select a different one and i'll show you that in other charts there are several options that you can customize from here and a lot more from the advanced options so let's just accept the defaults here myself my wife what type of information to show about each person in this case both the dates and places of births and deaths of those people and you can see here that there is other options of less information if you want how many generations of ancestors to show and let's go and generate the chart so you click on generate chart it takes you to a page that shows you all your previous charts and you can see that now this chart is being created it can take i remember when i created that one it took i think about 10 seconds so it's quite fast some larger charts can take more. In any case, you will be emailed when the chart is ready. If you don't want to wait here, if it's a big chart, then, then follow the link from the email, which would take you to back to this page. Once the chart is created, you will see here, here is your bow tie that you um, requested. And you can see a, a small image here that represents how this chart looks. And then when you just click it, or click the link called view PDF, which is basically the output of PDF file. You click it and you see this chart has been created. I'm showing only part of it because it's a bit large to show in the screen. So here's myself. Now you know all the information about me here. My lovely wife, our children, my parents, his parents, and so on. And on the same side for my wife. So this is a great chart for your children especially. It shows you um, their heritage, which is exactly what we do here. And you can see here the style was one of the styles that I selected. Of course, there's many other ones and many ways to customize that as well. So this is the first chart, a bow, chart, bow tie chart, as we said. Let's go back to the screen that we were in be the beginning and let's look at other types of charts. So the next one is what we call the close family. And the close family chart shows and allows you to print a very similar organization of what you see in the family tree when you edit the tree, what we call the family view. And this is the close family chart, which is in a way a PDF version of it. So it will show you a person and going all the way to his grandparents and then going down to their descendants. So you will also see brothers and sisters, cousins, uncles and aunts, and so on and also ancestors. So this is a way to focus on a person on and the important relatives of this person. And this chart has two modes. One what we call a vertical, which is what you see here, which kind of look horizontal really, because it creates a more of a landscape version, but vertical in the sense that ancestors are above their descendants. You can also go and choose horizontal, which will do the opposite. And here, children are to the left of their parents. So the most common one would be the vertical. And here I'm clicking 
on the link here in red, which is the advanced customization options, which is available for any type of charge, not just the close family, but let's look at it here. When you click here, you'll see that it's a long list of options. <clears throat> um, and in the first part, you can see which facts to show about each person, which we also saw in the basic uh, screen. You can also decide whether to show photos or not, and whether to show silhouettes or what we call placeholders for people who don't have a photo, how large are the photos, and then things about the design of each person, whether to show uh, what we call stylish, which is a box around the photo and the text underneath, or traditional, which I think I have here, which is a box around the entire person, and you can choose the border and the color of the border and the shadow and the colors for based on gender. So it's quite sophisticated. So you can go here and create a very specific look that you would like. And there's no limit on how many you can create. You can create, you like it, great. You don't like it, you can delete it or just keep it there. Um, below that, there is a section for the title, very different types of decorations that you can choose from for the title of the chart. The fonts you can select, colors of the fonts, uh, types of fonts, and then the background of the chart you can select from um, predefined images that we provide. You can just have regular background color. You can even give us a URL where you have an image that you may be uploaded or you have that we can use as the background image. And also the transparency level and whether to fit the image or scale it or tile it. Quite complicated, quite sophisticated, something you would expect in a mature software like MyHeritage. So let's go ahead and create a um, chart like this. This is the example of the um, types of frames that we have and the types of colors that we have and so on and the width. And let's create one. So here is a family chart, what we call. So here is myself, the same family, but now I'm seeing my brother and, and my two brothers and their families and cousins and all the ancestors that I have and so on. So this is very much like what you would see in the family view portion of the tree where you edit the tree. Now you can print it as well with different styles as well. So this was the family chart. Next is the ancestors chart. So this is a common thing that people would like to print, just concentrating on an ancestors, the ancestors of a person. And again, we have a vertical layout in which the ancestors appear above people and the horizontal which in which ancestors appear to the right of their descendants and here it's actually very similar to the layout that we now have in what we call the pedigree view for editing your tree although because of the um, way a card is organized it's a bit more tall than how you would see it in the pedigree view but basically it's the same type of, of information so if you want to print your pedigree view this is how you do it you go to the charts and go to ancestors, horizontal or vertical, and print. Create a chart and then you can print it. So let's look at a little bit more. So here, let's say I'm creating an ancestor chart. But here I don't want ancestors of myself, but rather I want ancestors of somebody else. So in the section below where I choose the styles, I can now start typing in a name. And here I'm typing in my son's name. So he will get my ancestors and my wife's ancestors. So I can, once I find the person that I want, I click and then I can go and generate the chart. And here is an example of ancestor chart. And you can see here that I selected many generations up of my son. We're seeing here only the left side of the chart, the right, it's quite a large chart, doesn't fit the screen. So the whole right side is my wife's side, which is his ancestors from my wife's side. So here you can see a, a nice ancestor chart, how you would expect to see it. And here, for example, I chose without a background image in a different style, so you can see that it looks a bit different. Um, maybe more readable, maybe less pretty, but it depends on what you're trying to achieve here. So this was ancestors chart. 
In the same way, we have what we call the descendants chart, which is the, the opposite. You're taking a person and showing himself, his children, his grandchildren, their spouses as well in order to connect everybody. So this is a, the opposite view where we're showing the bottom part of a chart. And again, there is a vertical and a horizontal view. Um, but let's move on to the next one, which is the hourglass chart. And the hourglass chart is the one that combines basically ancestors and descendants. So given a person, you can see all their heritage and all their legacy, which is quite fitting to this webinar here. Um, because you will see where you came from and what you're leaving behind. And again, there is a vertical view where ancestors appear above or a horizontal view where it's the exact the opposite direction. So let's here again, select a person as the root of this hourglass. And in this case, I'm choosing my grandmother. And when I generate the chart and after a few seconds, I will see a chart that looks like this. So here is my grandmother and I have an arrow pointing to her here. And below her are her children and their grandchildren, her great-grandchildren. And above, I see ancestors of herself and ancestors also of her husband, which is my grandfather. So in a way, it's a chart that actually shows the descendants and the ancestors of her children, my mother and her brothers. So this is a great way to kind of look at the legacy and the ancestry of, of a person, of a family in a way, of a unit. So this, this I find actually to be a very useful chart that uh, is, is, is nice for things like family reunions and the like, where you can look at everything that this person has done and where he came from. Okay, let's actually skip the sun chart and fan chart that I will look at later because they are a little different. And let's move on to the all-in-one chart. The all-in-one chart is a something pretty unique to my heritage. The other charts, it's pretty standard and available in other softwares and websites. It's uh, industry standard, so to speak. The all-in-one is an uh, ambitious attempt to try to create a chart that includes everybody in the tree. And usually the um, challenges there are to do with in-laws, where you have like trees inside trees that grow kind of shoots and that's quite a challenge how to present that so let's try to do that and see what that looks like so again you do select who is the focus point of the chart and from there everything spans out so again I'm going to select my grandmother and see what happens when I do this chart so after a few minutes and this took took some time to create because it's a quite a large tree. The result was something like this. It looks a little bit like a subway map or some flow chart of an electrical diagram because it's quite complicated and quite large. So sometimes not that useful for printing, but definitely for looking at and seeing everybody and how they are related. And I have an arrow here to show where I started from. This is my grandmother. And if I go and zoom in a bit, I can see here her and her parents above, quite a lot above, and her husband and his family. These are the in-laws that create a subtree and in-laws and more in-laws. So because of that, it creates quite a complicated chart, which we um, are giving you the opportunity to create for free again on my heritage and see how your entire family looks in a giant subway map with all the stations. Now, now let's move back in our list and look at fan charts. So fan charts are a bit different because until now we've seen charts that basically are kind of like flow charts where you have a person is a kind of a node and lines connecting in different ways based on the layout that you looked at. Fan charts are different. Again, they're pretty standard among genealogy software and websites. There's nothing very unique here, but we supply that, of course, as part of the tool chest that we provide you on my heritage. So a fan chart, you, again, there is an ancestor fan chart where you see yourself or whoever you choose in the middle, 
and a fan spanning from that person to the left is your father, to the right is your mother, and so on with grandparents and great-grandparents. So here again, I'm selecting my son in this case, and this is similar to what we saw before in the ancestor chart. Here it's an ancestor fan chart with the same information. You see, it doesn't have photos. Um, it's a little bit more bland, but it's very useful sometimes in order to do research because you can see what you're missing, what information you need to do research about, what are the people that you still don't have, and you can see these empty great, great uh, ancestors that I don't have information about and maybe this is a, a good way to find out who they are. Going to the descendants the same way, who are all the descendants of this person viewed as a fan chart. So here again I'm selecting in this case my great great grandfather and after a minute or so it produced this fan chart and here I selected a green background, background color, why not? So this is him and his wife at the center, and then his children and great and grandchildren and so on in, in rings around him. So this is the descendants fan chart. Again, useful, especially when you're trying to do the research of this branch of the family going down. But now let's go back to sun chart, which was something that I elaborated on also in a previous webinar, because this is a pretty unique and pretty new type of chart that we introduced uh, not long ago. So sun chart shows you either the descendants of a person, and this is what we're looking at now, or the ancestors of a person in a similar way that we, that we just saw with fan charts, but just that the layout is different and the richness is different and because of that, I think this is a much more uh, pretty way to look at the tree, something that uh, you would more, more likely want to print and hang on the wall, potentially. So let's look at the descendants version. And I'm selecting here, again, my great-grandfather. And in this case, uh, showing all generations, not limiting to any number of generations. And in this case, it works a little different. All the other charts that we saw, you click on this button called Generate Chart, wait and wait and wait, and get a PDF. And if you, don't, if you want to change some of the settings, you have to go back, change the setting, click, wait, and go back. This one works a bit differently. It was developed uh, more recently. Instead, you see a few options here that, that we saw. You click on Preview Chart, and it now works a bit and shows you the chart that is going to that you can now create a PDF of. So once you're happy with the settings, then you can create a PDF, which takes a bit longer. So here we are looking at um, the person that we've selected and his wife. And you can see here that instead of appearing as slices, they appear as circles with their photo. And their name and whatever information that I selected that I want to show, in this case, year, of birth and year of death only, but again, I can select full dates of birth and death, also places of birth and death if I want, and so it's pretty rich from that perspective as well. And you can see that it appears kind of like a solar system in a way, which was we call sun chart. We see a person and in rings around him, shining around him, all his descendants. So this is very uh, nice. If you do want to change the settings, you can click on the settings button at the top right, which will open a panel that shows you, you can change the title of the chart, how many generations, again, how much information to show about each person. There is also an interesting option to privatize living people, which if you choose that, then information about living people will only include um, their surname. Just like what happened if you're looking at somebody else's family tree on MyHeritage and you're not a member of that site, then the only thing you can see is their surnames of living people. So if you do want to print something and also send it to people who are not necessarily people that you want to expose information about living people, then this is the only chart right now that we have that support that option. You can change the size of the text, the size of the photos, whether to show spouses of descendants or not. And 
And another uh, very unique option here is the compactness of the chart. So I'll give you some idea here if you click on the difference between high and low compactness. The one on the right is what we saw before is the um, high compactness. And you can see that it actually will become a smaller chart to print and more dense. However, the one disadvantage of it is sometimes descendants do not appear very close to their parents because of the way that the tree is built where some people have more children than others. So that will cause those, some of the children to appear a little bit to the side of their parents. And it could be harder to read sometimes, but it has an advantage of smaller paper at the end for printing and smaller size of a poster to print. And here is after you generate the chart, you get a high quality PDF that you can now print. Um, just a side anecdote about sun charts. This is actually an idea that we stumbled upon while doing one of our um, pro bono research programs, which we do quite a lot of. This was about a um, Jewish community in Greece and the Cor island of Corfu that we saw that they have been using for years this system of documenting family tree in something that looks like the image here on the right. And we decided to adopt that and give that as a tool for all our users on MyHeritage, digitized more uh, with options of photos and so on. So it's a lot more uh, visually pleasing. So you have, now we know how to create these charts and we said that you can print those charts, but one of the service that we also provide is to order a poster on a large piece of paper, something that is much harder for you to do at home. So once we go back to that list of charts that you have produced, which you can always go back to by clicking on my charts, and let's go back to that page. So going back a little bit, um, if I was in the first page of my presentation, let's go back to it. Mm -hmm. You see here, there is a link called my charts. If I go here, I can, I can bypass creating your charts and going to the list of all the charts that I have created in the past. So let's jump back to the screen that I was in. Okay, so now that I have a chart and here's all the charts that I've created and I can click here, order poster. And when I do that, I will go to a screen that allows me to select uh, the size of the printout. And we have certain sizes of plotter papers that we work with. So we try to fit it into that size. So if you use the smaller uh, paper, it will be a 51% reduction in this case of your chart. And this convenient image here shows you how it would fit in your living room. So this is what you can expect the size to look like. <clears throat> in this example here, you can also go to a bigger size of paper and that would be with 100%, so no reduction in size, but much bigger poster. You can also choose the quality of the paper, vinyl, glossy, matte, canvas, different sizes, different types of paper that we work with, which will affect, of course, the price. And then once you continue, fill in your you know, credit card information and uh, shipping address, it would uh, send this to our plotters. We use a third party that produces these things for us and be sent home to you. So you can now hang it above that sofa. <coughs> um, but if you do want to print at home, uh, one option that we have at the bottom of every one of those customized chart sections is whether you want to print it in a single page, which is what we saw before, which allows you to print it as a poster or allows you to print it in a printer. But if you use regular paper, it will try to tend to shrink it into that small paper. So instead you would want to select, use multiple pages. And you can select your printer size, which is usually letter or in Europe, it's a little bit different. And then when you generate a chart like this, 
actually what happens, and I'm looking here at an example, is it actually creates a PDF with multiple pages. So it's convenient for printing and each page has a part and then you can go and glue it together with a solo tape uh, and create this big uh, printout that you can use. Okay, so we finished with charts, and now let's move on to what we call a family book, which is a report, really, not a chart, that we provide on our site on MyHeritage. So let's go to the last option here, family book. And a family book is a detailed and professional compilation of the family tree. It includes many different sections, narratives about each person in the tree or in the part of the tree that you're looking at, with photographs and indexes and a lot of information. It's a great way to kind of capture your research and present it to others as well. So if we scroll down here after a selected family book, again, who is the focal point of your book and in this case I again selected one of my great great grandparents and you can see here that there's many different sections to this book and you can choose which ones you want or no, do not want in that report. Again paper size because it does print it as a book so usually you would go with letter and then you would click generate book. Here it usually takes a bit more time to run this book and create the PDF because it's looking at a pretty large set of people and pretty large amount of information about each one. But when this is finished, you would get a PDF file that has many, many pages. And here is how it looks like in the example that I had. It shows you here is a book about this person. And here is a table of contents. And I can scroll down and there is this descendants sort of chart um, about this person and then you can have details about every person in that person, all these relatives of his, so his wife, his children, his parents, his nieces and nephews and everybody that is related to him. And he, for each one, a lot of information, uh, narratives, notes, uh, their children, dates and everything. And also then there is small trees about the family tree around that person. So this case is myself, my family, little family tree, my brother, and so on and so on. And then there is an index of all the notes and the index of all the sources and the index of all the places. So it's quite extensive as you can see. And again, you can decide to not have some of the sections as we saw before. Dates as well in chronological order. This is pretty sophisticated a book that I think is very handy. So this was the book report and we pretty much finished all the different types of charts and books that are available in that section called print charts and books. Another report that we have on the site is in a different area. It's called a relationship report. Um, and what it does and <clears throat> when I select relationship report it takes me to a simple screen where I select what we call the source individual and the target individual. Usually the source would be yourself, but you can again select somebody else. And then you start typing in name of another person and it will find people with that name. And once you select that and you click on display relationship and you can select the amount of details you want to show about each person. It will show you in a kind of a graph how the two of you are related. So in this case, he is the husband of the daughter of the father of the mother of my mother. So, and then at the bottom, which I show here in a box because I don't have enough room to show that in this slide, it explains how you are related. And exactly what I showed here, I mean more of a bullet list of how the relationships are. So this is especially useful when you have somebody farther away and you want to understand how you are related or how he is related to somebody else in the tree. So this is a more of a pinpoint uh, report when you're 
trying to figure out something in your tree that you're not sure of. So this concludes the part of the reports that are available on myheritage.com. Through Family Tree Builder, our genealogy software available again for free for Windows and Mac. Um, all the charts that I showed you are available as well, except for the sun charts, which are only available online. And it also includes more reports, not just the book report. It, uh, it also includes other more standard reports like uh, family group sheets, relate, full relationship reports, and I'll show some of them here. And it also allows you to create an Excel report that lists people in your tree, what information you want about them, and export it outside, and then you can um, do research using this spreadsheet. So let's look at how this is done. So in Family Tree Builder, if you go to the Charts section button here, um, you can either open a menu that allows you to choose all of the things that you see here, or click on what we call the Charts Wizard, which will bring you here, which looks very much like what we saw online. Again, you select the type of chart, who is the person in the middle, styles, and then you can select you know, advanced customization. And at the end, you will basically produce the exact same charts that we saw before. If you go to the report section, there is a menu that has some of the reports that we saw before, the book report but also other reports that are only available on Family Tree Builder. One of them is the classic family group sheet that allows you to see information about a husband, a wife, and all their children with the areas where you can see this is what I'm missing. So it's easy to take this and fill it out and then go back to the software or the site and fill in the information. Another useful report that you have only on um, Family Tree Builder today is a list of all the relationships that a person has to other people. So what we saw before in that nice map of how two people are related, here you can see a long list of how is everybody related to somebody in the tree, sorted by how many, how far they are in that relationship. So direct relations and secondary relations and so on. Other types of reports are in a way subsections of that uh, large book report that we saw. So you can create a report of a person and his ancestors in this kind of format, which shows you narratives and important facts and relatives of that person. The same thing you can do by selecting a person and doing uh, only their descendants, the previous one was ancestors. And lastly, I wanted to show how you can create a Excel spreadsheet, or actually before that, those reports that I'm showing you here, the descendants and ancestors and so on, have many customization options. Uh, what content to show, what, whether to show sources, and how to actually refer to sources, and a numbering system of all the people. There are different types of numbering systems that people use. Um, we have our own, and there's other ones as well that you can choose from. So if you have Family Tree Builder and you're an advanced users, user, this is a good way to create these reports, and you can go to the report options and see how elaborate they are. Lastly, to show that you can also export a custom report, which is basically an Excel of either all people or some people, and you can select ancestors or descendants of a person or do a search criteria, an advanced one that will kind of filter down the list of people based on names and dates and so on, very elaborate. And then what to, which fields to show about each person, the standard ones, or now you can go into this select button and say, I also want occupation, and I also want uh, uh, ancestral file number, and all kinds of things like that based on what type of information you have in your tree. And once you click OK, you create an Excel spreadsheet, and here it is. So now you can go and save that and work with it in Excel to um, do your research. and. Um, Continue there. 
So this is pretty much it in my presentation. Any questions? Jeff will now take over, I guess. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Uri. Uh, I've, writ I've written down uh, uh, some charts that I really enjoy that uh, that I haven't explored yet. Uh, that the descendant style of the fan chart, my guess is that is unique to my heritage. It's not one that I've seen uh, anywhere else. So uh, yeah, very well done with that. Uh, we've got lots of uh, nice comments here, and uh, I do have some questions uh, before we. Uh, address those questions. I'm going to switch this over to my computer and let's do a couple of door prizes and then we'll get right into the questions. So, uh, and as a reminder, our next uh, webinar in the My Heritage webinar series was coming up at the end of July on an overview of an important historical record collections. Uh, followed by in August, uh, we'll get to learn about how photos enhance genealogical research. So, looking forward uh, to that. Now uh, let's go to uh, our door prizes, and we have two of these, uh, two uh, one-year My Heritage Complete Plans. And uh, Uri, if if I'm not mistaken, everything that you showed us here today is in the free areas of My Heritage. Uh, yes, that's the, correct. Okay, good. So the charts and the books, and even uh, the use of the Family Tree Builder app, that's that's all uh, available to everybody. Uh, that is right. Okay, good. And then um, also we have there's the Premium Plus Family Site subscription. There's the Data subscription um, that are that uh, provides access to records and to trees and and uh, and so I've got those as door prizes here and and bullet points to talk to you about uh, what's included in those. So uh, what I would like to do is uh, for our attendees that are here live is to uh, look in your webinar control panel for the little little hand raising button there and just click it one time and uh, by you clicking it that tells me that uh, that you want to be in the list uh, to be chosen for a door prize and uh, while you're finding that a uh, question from Peggy just in asks the premium plus covers everything is is that correct well the the premium plus would would cover everything for for the trees um, Peggy the data subscription that would be as a separate uh, part of my heritage that is specific to the records uh, but the complete plan that is the one that covers everything so Peggy I hope that helps to clarify uh, okay, let's uh, let's go over here. We're going to choose our first winner, uh, Kevin Hackett. So, Kevin, congratulations! And uh, if I call your name, just watch for an email uh, to come your way. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's uh, let me go to my next screen, which is this one, a duplicate. So, here's our second uh, door prize. So, uh, this time we're going to go to Darla Bauer. So, Darla, congrats! Uh, glad that you're here today. Uh, just writing down your names. Okay, and uh, so congratulations. And then, yeah, let's let's go on to questions here. So, uh, Uri, I've uh, I've got some good questions. Um, Cherie uh, wants you to clarify for her what was the difference between the bow tie and the hourglass charts. And Uri, if you want me to switch over to your computer anytime, just let me know. I'm happy to do that. Um, sure, you can switch over. Um, oh, okay. The difference is that, let's accept to show my screen. Okay, let me scroll down and we can see the actual difference. So, da, 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 where was I? So here's bow tie. So currently, Uri, I'm on, uh, okay, yes. good, we're seeing your, good, there's your bow tie now. So, yeah, so bow tie basically shows ancestors of both sides of a couple and to the left and to the right and children so it doesn't show more descendants it only shows to the, the the first level of children and you can actually opt if you want to say don't show children that can work as well so it basically shows the only ancestors and children the hourglass on the other hand and let's move to that 
it shows you all levels of descendants. So it goes further down. And let's look at here. So here it's organized in the other direction, up, down, which you can also do left, right. But you can see that I am seeing here ancestors of both wife and husband of this couple, but not just children, but also their children, and grandchildren, and so on. So it is un unlimited in how much it goes down. So it's actually, it's actually more extensive. It, it will tend to be much bigger, the chart as well. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's go to Joellen's question, and she she's wondering about the family book, uh, about the price range of printing a book like that. Is that one where it can be ordered through my heritage, or is that just a PDF that we print on our computers? Is there a cost associated with that? Right, so the printing of the charts is available for charts only because they tend to be very large. Okay. Or larger than a regular piece of paper. So, be, and usually people want to create a nice, um, on a plotter paper, a high quality to hang on the wall, for example. So, for that, we give the uh, service of professional printing on, on plotters of large. Um, wide paper. For the book, the printing of the poster is not available and it's not necessary because it's just regular pages that you can print at home or at Walmart or any place that provides printing services of a higher quality. Okay. Of regular paper, yeah. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, we've got a couple of people asking about this. Uh, on your either on the fan charts or on the all-in-one charts, how do uh, how do you deal with uh, pedigree collapse? Meaning, uh, when first when cousins marry or you know, you know, different parts yep. of the tree have shared have the same ancestors, how how is that dealt with? Yeah, this is a good point. Um, we deal with it in the same way that we deal with it in when you're viewing your tree for editing. When we see a person twice, and that would appear, for example, if you're doing, let's say, descendants of someone, and the same descendants appear twice, one through one brother and one through another brother because there was a marriage of cousins, then we flag that that person is duplicate, and then we will continue with that person's part of the tree only in one side. So I actually think when I saw these examples, I think I saw this here in the all-in-one chart, you can see here that this old man here, oh, yeah. is one of my ancestors actually, and it has this green dot. Yeah. Sometimes it's a green, sometimes it's red, but you see that this person appears twice because he married his cousin of something of that nature. Or here you also see this red on this side. And it says this person with red and this person with the red color appears somewhere else in the tree. That means that it's actually the same person. There is a pedigree collapse here. So using, using color coding, and then we won't duplicate the entire branch of that person. We will only show it. We will pick one of those instances of that person and continue from there. Okay. Well, good. Thank you. Uh, a related question. <clears throat> How do you display adopted versus biological parents in the charts, or if you have more than one set of parents linked to a person? Yes. So let's go into that. I remember seeing that, showing this here. So when you go to the advanced settings, you see here that in the line options, one of the options is to say display adopted and foster parent-child relationship with a dashed line. Ah. And if you select that, then this would, would happen. Again, Assuming that when you built your tree, you actually specified that this child is adopted, then we will honor that. And then if you select this option, it will show this as, as dashed lines. Okay. Um, regarding the second question um, about people who have more than one set of parents in the tree, which is actually quite difficult to achieve on my heritage at this point. Okay. In the sense of how do you build that? There is a way, but it's not that trivial, unfortunately. Uh, when this happens and we produce chart that involves ancestors, I think we would just choose the first one that you put there. It does not show two sets of parents in, in the charts. 
it will just pick the first one. Okay. Uh, good. Thank you. Now, Sandra has a question about the about these being um, free. Are they yep. are they free just um, if you have two hundred and fifty people or less in your online tree, or is it is it free regardless of how many people are in your tree? Right. So the difference between our programs uh, are is usually based on the two things. One is the size of the tree that you can actually work with on my heritage. So if you're just using the basic, you can create up to 250 people. And then there is which tools you can use. So in the basic sites, most of the tools, including books and charts are free, are available. Some of the tools like um, uh, record matches and a few other, like the consistency checker that we looked at before. Some of the options are, some of the tools are available only if you have a paid plan. But if you have a, a not so large tree and you're just using the basic, then you can use the charts. Uh, so the, the charts is not a, um, you do not need to have a premium plan in order to use charts. Of course, if you have a premium plan, you can build a larger tree and also use charts, but it, the, the charts are not tied to having a premium plan. It's the size of the tree, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so just to confirm uh, from Joellen, she's she's saying, so is it possible to show both the person's adopted parents and the biological parents on, on one chart? Um, I I think not. I'll probably need to verify, but okay. I think we just choose the first set. If okay. you ha if you did, and probably the way you did that is either you imported a JEDCOM that has this information, okay, or you did. There is some roundabout way of doing it, but it's quite difficult to do because usually in in the tree that we have, if the person has parents, we do not give you the option to add another parent who is not one of them. Okay. So in order to do that, it's difficult, but it's possible. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, that concludes that concludes all of the questions that we have specific to reports. Uh, I do have a few other questions um, okay. that I can throw your way. Would that be okay? Sure, let's do it. See what I can do. Okay. Uh, so you mentioned uh, the term JEDCOM, and Maria actually has a question about that. She's wondering, is it possible to create a JEDCOM file uh, of a specific branch of her tree at my heritage. It is possible through Family Tree Builder, not through the site. So if you have, uh, if you're just working online, you can just create a JEDCOM of your entire tree. Okay. If you are working in Family Tree Builder, when you go to the export JEDCOM, there is an option which is very much like what we just saw in the Excel option, if you remember. If yeah. I, let's bring that up. So if you're creating an Excel, you can either say everybody, or you have this control called people, which allows you to select which people do you want to include in the Excel. So if you go to the similar screen that looks like export GenCom, there will be a section there that says, do you want everybody or do you want selected people, which could be usually either the descendants of somebody or ancestors of somebody, or a search criteria, which is you know, more elaborate. So that, that would be the way to do that. Okay. If you don't have Family Tree Builder, it's again free. You can just install it and it will synchronize your tree from online directly to Family Tree Builder. And then you can use all the tools there. It, does, it, should, it will not affect your tree online. You can still work online as well. And uh, a follow-up question from Debbie uh, relating to the Excel or the what you're looking at right now. How did you get to this uh, this screen that we're seeing? And maybe maybe just go to the prior uh, slide. Yeah. So let's uh, actually in the prior slide I don't have it. So let me just oh, okay. open Family Tree Builder here. You see it open here? Yes. So to get to reports, you see this button here called reports. And there's all these reports. And we saw family group sheet. We saw relationships. Um, 
and we have what's called export custom report. Okay. Which is the last one, which is here. Okay, so that was in the actual, that was in the app. That's not available yeah. on the site, correct? Right. Uh, at this point, we're working on a, on a exporting of lists of individuals to oh, Excel neat. on the site, which I would hope will be by the end of the, this year available as well. Oh, great. Okay. Fun to. The export JetCom, you go from here to export. And then you will have options to select which people you want here okay. as well in the next. Okay. Any any other surprises uh, you want to tell us about about what's coming for the future? I I like I like getting the those kind of secrets. Yeah. <laughs> Always That's working on something. I know, I know that we're specking it and starting to work on it. Yeah. Hopefully by the end of the year or maybe the beginning of next year it'll be available. Oh, good. Um, other surprises? Not anything that I can think of right now. Okay. No. Nothing that you could tell us anyways. And that's that's fine. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, let's Going back to the site, a uh, question from Debbie. She's wondering, uh, first, are the, are the trees, are they private? And, and second, can you give others permission to view your tree yes so the trees when you create a uh, tree on my heritage so there is a default privacy setting and in the default privacy setting let me switch back out of here and open the site and see if that works hold on I'm somehow I'm connected to the large screen so it's a little bit uh, okay big here um, by the default privacy settings, and I can look here at privacy settings, which I can control, is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I have many sites, but basically it's that of all the people that I create on my tree are, if they are a living people, the, the only their surname could ever be exposed to outside of people that I specifically what we call invite as members to the site. So my, my tree can be accessed by other people if they are on my heritage and doing searches. They can reach parts of my tree because my tree is searchable on my heritage. I can even decide not to do that. If I want my tree to be completely private, I can go and, and block that as well here. Include my family tree on in my heritage historical search engine. If I say no, then nobody can search my tree and find people in my tree. But again, they can only find information about deceased people. Living people are always private. How, now, I could also go and invite specific people to my tree. So in this section called site member and invite family. So here I have invited many people in my family to my tree my brother and my and his family and, and so on and so on, my uncle and aunt. I have a lot of people that are invited. So once they are invited, they can see everything in my tree, including living people. So this is the way you basically compartmentalize who can see what. You When you invite them, you actually have to put their email address or they can request to be a member and you accept that. There's two ways to do that. But once you trust each other, then you're good to go. Okay, uh, thank you. And if you'll if you'll hold hold that screen right there, uh, James has a qu a question about the icons in the upper left uh, for the the hints, the uh, the record hints, the smart matches. Uh, what yeah, what James is wondering, he says he he has so many of those that he's wondering if is there a way to uh, filter that or to narrow it down to just a certain part of his tree. Um, yes, so here we see what you were talking about. So here I'm looking at matches per people. There is a way to just search for a person. Um, another way to do that and I, is um, if you just go to the family tree, you would see people who have hints. So you can see these green and and brown icon saying these people have hints. So if you're just looking at the tree, you would see who has and who hasn't got matches. So that's one way to do that. 
Um, if you go and click here, there is no simple way to go and say, show me only, for example, my ancestors. Yeah. Show me only things of that nature. Yeah. But I know that there are plans. I can't guarantee when. Okay. To, to narrow down from there as well. Okay. Yeah, that that would be a that'd be a neat way of, of being able yeah. to filter that down. Mm -hmm. Yes, people have requested us because you start getting a lot, and you want to just focus on the people that are really of of interest yeah. and ignore the rest. Yeah, I like that. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Cindy has a question about the family tree builder. She's wondering, uh, does it automatically update? And I, I think I think what she's asking is uh, if. If she does something to her tree uh, online, does it uh, does it update her tree in the in the app? Yes. So, once you, if you have Family Tree Builder and you create the connection between your tree and online and your Family Tree Builder, which it will ask you to do once you install Family Tree Builder and you log in as yourself, so it recognizes, okay, you have a tree online. Do you want to bring it down? Or if you're doing the opposite and you're just starting from Family Tree Builder, you start building a tree and then say, I want to put it online. And once that connection is established, you see here this sync button, which is now disabled because I have a, no connection at this point with an online tree. But once I do, you click this button to sync and it will now synchronize. So any changes that happen on the tree online will come to your Family Tree Builder and vice versa. And you can also set it to do it automatically. You can say, just synchronize whenever you see that there are changes and it happens automatically. Very good. Thanks, Uri. Uh, Barbara has a question. Uh, it, is it possible to merge several trees that that she has on MyHeritage? She says that they have, her several trees appear to have been created at different times, but basically you're include the same people um, mm -hmm. what would you recommend to her yeah you know we get this question pretty much at any webinar and ah. every uh, <laughs> conference that I go to I would get somebody asking that oh. I know that it is something that people want um, we don't have uh, useful tools for that at this point okay and it's definitely something that is uh, at our list you know, in our list of things that we want to do, it's quite challenging because there's a, a lot of overlaps and not exactly the same information and, and tools for allowing you to do this merge are quite sophisticated and I hope that we will supply them one day. Okay. Well, um, uh, I, was just, I was almost going to say we've, can, we've finished all our questions, but we have one more here from Sue that just came in. Uh, she's wondering uh, if you upload a a GEDCOM file to MyHeritage and it creates a tree, uh, can you then uh, delete uh, your the tree that was created? Yes. So if I am going, and I actually am going to, first of all, um, interesting point to note is that as a member in MyHeritage, I could be, I can have multiple family sites. And in each family site, I can have one or more family tree. So it's even more sophisticated than that. Usually you would have one family site and you might be a member of other family sites where somebody else invited you. But you can also have multiple family sites that you manage and people have that. I have that set because I'm just, you know, playing around with the product. But if I do go to what's called managed trees in my site, and in this one, I have one tree, but I have some that I created, just examples of things. Just, for the, I think this one, just a sample one that I have. Yeah. And in that one, I think I have more than one tree. So if you go to manage tree, here is an example. If you did, if you have a tree, and then you go and do import GenCom, it will create another tree. So you'll have here a list of trees, which is what I have here. And when I have one that I am I'm done with and I don't need anymore, you can click here on this delete. This is also where you would do an export to JetCom and other operations such as changing the settings of this tree and the name of the tree and so on. 
So this is where you would do it from the man family tree, managed trees. Okay. Uh, thank you. And Uri, we've got one more that just came in from Selma. Okay. Uh, Selma asks, uh, how do I upload a document such as a birth certificate to an event for an individual? A document to an event. Yeah, um, like like she's yeah. got a digital image yeah. and and wants to add it to uh, to that person in her tree. Is that possible? Right. So when you go to Family Tree, there is a thing called my. It's actually in the photos. Basically, you treat it as a photo, but uh -huh. yeah. in photos you can also do videos and and other documents. We just decided to call this whole thing photos. Okay. Generally speaking, but once I'm there. This is some playground that I use. You can do upload photos. And when you do that, when you do select file or drag and drop, if this is a scanned image of a birth certificate or if this is a PDF file or if this is something else, you can do that. So you can just use it as a photo and then say that this person is in this photo, even though they're really a person who this is the birth certificate of but you treat it in the same way. Okay. And then that photo, this person becomes, so to speak, tagged in that photo, which is actually a scanned document, but it's the same idea. Okay. All right, Uri. Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I do, I've got lots of questions in here about the syncing of, uh, of my heritage to the legacy software also. Um, yeah, that's coming out in version 10 of legacy folks and, we don't mm -hmm. know yet when uh, that's scheduled for release, but yeah, that's that's uh, on the roadmap. Well, uh, Uri, any any uh, final thoughts uh, that you'd like to leave us with before we say goodbye? Um, do your family history, do your family research. Hopefully, use my heritage as much as you can and enjoy. Oh, very good. Well, uh, in, in, enjoy indeed. So uh, it was enjoyable here today, uh, sharing time with you, Uri, and, and all of the rest of you. So wherever and whenever you are around the world, um, how do I usually conclude this? Uh, just remember, life is short to do genealogy first. Bye, everyone. Bye, Uri. Goodbye. Thank you.